Assalamualaikum, salam sejahtera. Apa khabar semua? Hari ini saya akan terangkan tentang yang smodelers. Mudah-mudahan awet muda dan forever young. Okay, untuk bahagian pertama dalam 11.2 yang smodelers, kita semua perlu tahu tentang yang uh, definition of yang smodelers. Seterusnya, perlu tahu tentang strain energy daripada graf Force elongation. Perlu juga tahu tentang strain energy per unit volume daripada graf stress strain. Okay, uh, pertama sekali, kalau dalam bentuk ayat, uh, definition of Young's modulus uh, adalah ratio of the tensile stress to the tensile strain. Ada satu syarat ya. Eh? If the proportionality limit has not been exceeded. Okay, dalam uh, persamaan, uh, simbol untuk yang modulus adalah Y huruf besar. Sama dengan tensile stress over tensile strain. Tensile stress adalah force over area. Tensile strain adalah elongation over original length. Akhirnya kita akan dapat satu persamaan yang modulus sama dengan force darab dengan uh, original length over area darab dengan elongation. Okey, perlu tahu yang modulus adalah skala kuantiti bermaksud uh, hanya magnitude tiada arah. Ada tiga unit untuk yang modulus. Pertama, kilogram meter kuasa negatif satu. Second, kuasa negatif dua. Kemudian yang kedua adalah newton meter kuasa negatif dua. Yang ketiga adalah pascal. Kalau kita lihat uh, nilai yang semodel untuk satu bahan, kalau nilainya tinggi bermaksud bahan tersebut susah untuk kita, kalau contoh wire, susah untuk tarik ataupun susah untuk kita mampatkan. Kalau kita lihat pada tabel 11.2a ada tiga bahan yang mempunyai tiga nilai yang modulus dalam pascal yang berbeza. Contoh untuk belian nilainya adalah 1.2 darab 10 kuasa 11 pascal. Okey, uh, seterusnya untuk emas Nilainya adalah 7.9 darab 10 kuasa 10 pascal. Okay, uh, cuma untuk belian ni kena ada uh, satu lagi maklumat yang kita perlu tahu. Kalau uh, barang emas yang uh, nilainya beratnya lebih daripada 800 gram uh, perlu bayar zakat. Eh. Okay, uh, seterusnya untuk kaca yang modulus adalah 6.5 darab 10 kuasa 10 pascal. Okay, uh, kalau kita bandingkan ketiga-tiga bahan ni, belian mempunyai yang modulus dalam pascal yang paling tinggi. Uh, itu sebabnya uh, belian ni kita uh, susah untuk kompreskan dia. Dia uh, sangat tahan lasak. Okay, itu juga uh, salah satu sebab kenapa barang kemas belian adalah sangat mahal. Okay, uh, seterusnya kita pergi pada strain energy. Simbolnya adalah U huruf besar. Contoh kalau kita ada wire dan kita tarik wire tersebut akan ada satu tenaga dalam wire yang dinamakan sebagai strain energy. Kemudian uh, contohlah kalau kita buat eksperimen dan kita lukis graf force dalam newton lawan elongation dalam centimeters. Okay, uh, jadi kita boleh dapat satu graf garis lurus. Jadi uh, kalau kita nak kira strain energy daripada force elongation graph, kita cuma kira area under the graph. Okay. Kalau untuk graph ini, kita boleh kira guna luas segitiga. Setengah darab dengan force darab dengan elongation. Okay, uh, so, seterusnya uh, untuk graph stress lawan strain uh, 
kita boleh kira area under the graph until the proportionality limit. Jadi kita boleh dapat nilai strain energy per unit volume. Okay, jadi kalau kita lihat pada graf figure 11.2C, kita boleh juga guna uh, persamaan luas segitiga. Setengah darab dengan stress darab dengan strain. Physics required practical. How to determine the Young modulus of a material and specifically a copper wire. The Young modulus is a really important property in engineering as it tells us how easily a material will stretch or deform. The Young modulus is defined as the ratio of tensile stress to tensile strain, where stress is the force applied per unit area and the strain is the extension relative to original length. The Young modulus is given the letter E and this is equal to FL over A delta L. This is the setup that we're going to use today. We have taken a fairly long piece of copper wire. It is over two meters. Because the extensions are so small, you do want fairly long original length. This is just one example of a setup. You can also hang some wires, sometimes steel is the best, vertically suspended from a beam, but it depends if your school laboratory has that sort of infrastructure that enables you to do it. So this is the best option for us. In this investigation, there are two safety precautions to consider. The first is that if the wire breaks, and it may well do, it could snap across the surface of the eye, causing damage. So it is really important to wear eye protection in the form of safety goggles. This second is that if the wire snaps, of course the slot masses will fall to the ground. Be careful not to have your foot or a knee underneath the slot masses and perhaps also place a carpet or a tray of sand underneath the slot masses to protect the floor when they fall. So the force applied is the tension that we apply to the wire. As you can see, we have clamped the wire at the far end of the bench and then we've run the wire over a pulley and attached it to a vernier scale. At the end of the vernier scale, we have the hanger and we are going to attach slot masses in increments of 100 grams. And that will provide the tension, which is mg. You will notice that we actually have two wires attached and this is because it's important to have a test wire that we apply the tension force to and also a comparison wire. This allows us to give us a reference point and also if there are any changes in the ambient atmosphere, for example, if the wire extends due to temperature, it will happen to both and we can find the relative extension of the test wire. The next step is to find the diameter of the wire and for this the best equipment is a micrometer and this will give us a resolution to a hundredth of a millimetre. The wire may not be perfectly uniform throughout and so it's a good idea to take the diameter, measure the diameter at three separate points and then calculate the mean. I'm going to take it here, you turn the small dial until you hear the first click and I can see the reading to be 0.28 millimetres. I then measured the diameter in the middle of the wire and at the far end of the wire. The first two readings were the same. The diameter was 0.28 millimetres, but the third was 0.27 millimetres. However, when I calculated the mean, you still have to give the final result to two significant figures. And so it still averages out to 0.28 millimetres. Cross-sectional area equals pi d squared over four. The next measurement we require is the original length of the wire. And for this, we used a series of meter rules and found the original length to be 2.46 meters. We have, of course, already applied a small tension to the wire to ensure that the wire is taut when we took the readings of diameter and original length. And this was supplied by the hangers already attached to the vernier scale. However, before we add the additional 100 grams, we have to make sure that our vernier scale is perfectly zeroed. So if we go back to our original equation, E equals FL over A delta L, we've accounted for the force, we've measured the original length, we've calculated the cross-sectional area by measuring the diameter. So now we can start to measure the extension under an applied force by attaching the slot masses and we will measure the extension on the vernier scale. So I'm going to start by adding my first 100 grams because this is our reference point of zero. As I mentioned before, the extensions are very small and so far I have not seen a significant extension. So I'm going to add another 100 grams. I've taken a few readings now and I can see that at adding 500 grams, it has now ascended by 1.4 millimetres. 
If you're not sure how to read vernier scales, remember that there are two scales. The first reading, you see where the zero on the sliding scale, where it's between on the fixed scale. So I can see it's between one and two millimeters. So I know it's one point something millimeters. I then get the next decimal point by seeing which is the first line that lines up with a line on the fixed scale. And I can see here that the fourth line lines up with the fixed scale and therefore I can say it's 1.4 millimetres. In this investigation, although we're interested in extension in metres, our vernier scale gives us an extension in millimetres. So don't forget to convert it to metres when plotting your graph. When you have a full set of data, we can now plot the graph. There are various ways of plotting the graph, and you could plot the stress versus the strain, but this is quite a complicated way of doing it. It's more standard to plot the force against the extension. However, plotting a force when you have to times the mass by g, 9.81, the values aren't particularly easy to plot on a graph. So we're going to stick with the mass and the extension. Our preferred method is to plot the mass on the y-axis and the extension on the x-axis because this gives us quite a typical stress-strain curve that you'd be familiar with. If you plot the extension on the y-axis and the mass on the x-axis, which you may also see, it does of course give you the inverse for the gradient. Plotting it this way, our gradient gives us the mass divided by delta L. We can then say that the Young modulus E is equal to the gradient times G times the original length divided by the cross-sectional area. When measuring the gradient, it's really important that you take the gradient from the linear part of the graph. Your graph may show a linear part and then it may curve off, in which case that's great because you've shown that the wire behaves elastically and then starts to behave plastically. However, for determining Young modulus, it's really important to only take the gradient in the linear part and not include the part after it's gone beyond the limit of proportionality. It's also important on your graph to plot the mass in kilograms. Our gradient is 357 kilograms per meter. Times that by G, 9.81. Times it by our original length, which was 2.46 meters, and divided by our cross-sectional area, which was 6.2 times 10 to the minus 8 meters squared. And we get a value for the Young's modulus, E, of 1.39 times 10 to the 11 pascals, or 139 gigapascals. We can compare this to the known value of the Young modulus of copper, which is 117 gigapascals. We can now take a percentage error in our value compared to the theoretical value, which gives us a percentage error of 19%. Okay, itu sahaja daripada saya. Uh, mohon maaf atas apa-apa kesilapan. InsyaAllah jumpa lagi masa akan datang.